Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing the Red Cathedral from Devere Games and its expansion, the Red Cathedral Contractors. The Red Cathedral is a medium weight Euro game in which you will be going ahead and building out the Red Cathedral. You'll be working with other players in this not cooperative game in order to build out the cathedral over here. You'll have a specific pattern of patterns of cards you can see over here. You'll have a bunch of cards over here that will give you different options for different player accounts as far as how to lay out the cards. And if you're wondering why they look different, it's because as you flip these and build these, those will turn over. But you're going to go ahead and build out the cathedral with other players with a game that's going to give you a variety of ways to score points, including area control within the cathedral itself. As you place your markers on the cathedral and as you build out those areas and as you decorate those cathedral areas with other ornaments over here, you'll be going ahead and scoring an area control game for who contributed the most to each column and how that scores. Along with that, there's a whole bunch of other things you'll be doing to get points in the game as you go. Every time you build out a piece, you'll get points over here. There's a variety of different mechanisms that will give you different points as well. There's two different types of points. We'll get to that shortly. But that's basically the high level overview of the game. Take an action in order to go ahead and try to build out the Red Cathedral. As far as the actions, the actions you have in the game, you have three core actions in the base game. We'll talk about the base game first and then go into the expansion. This giant open area over here, that's going to be for the expansion. We'll get to that shortly. But in the game, what you're going to do is one of three actions. The first action you can take is you can reserve one of the cathedral spots. In order to do that, all you have to do is take one of your markers from this board over here, put it on any spot over here. So for example, going ahead, I'll go ahead and take this one. And then you have to pay two money potentially or pay X amount of dollars in order to go ahead and take this marker here and put it into your player board. So for example, I could, pay, I could pay two money in order to put this onto my die over there, onto the green die spot, which will give me a bonus whenever I activate the green die. We'll come to that later. You could choose to not pay the two money, but then you don't get that recurring bonus instead. The second action you can take, that's, that's the first action. It's all about reserving a cathedral piece, and now you are the only player who can build in this area. The second action is delivering goods to the cathedral. We haven't talked yet how you get goods from the central market over here, but the second action you can take is you can deliver goods to the cathedral. You can deliver up to three goods to any cathedral spots that you have a claim marker on, and if you deliver the last necessary good, you'll go ahead and complete that cathedral spot, getting the money and points shown. Additionally, there are some points to be aware of, in terms of if a player completes a higher level spot sooner than another player, then there will be points lost by that player. So for example, if we have another player who completes this one while I have, have this over here uncompleted, there's a penalty for having shamefully not completed the foundations in time. You can still build above, but somebody else will go ahead and get that. Additionally, part of that action is the idea of those decorations, those ornaments we talked about, that you have these different decorations over here, that you can deliver these, which will give you a degree of area control scoring in the end game points. Additionally, you can deliver gems along with those in order to go up points as you go through that as well. The way points work in this game is gonna be there's two different kinds of points. You can move up slowly on the point track, or you can go ahead and get to these over here. And as you move up these, you'll jump different points. And you can also pay those using some of the bonus actions over here. You can pay those any point if I have my marker over here I can lower myself to the next marker downwards and then get two money at any point so there's a few ways you can trade those in and as you go closer as you go further and further around the board the gap between those will close what initially starts off as five four three two one will eventually close all the way down to being equal on those levels over there when you deliver those ornaments over there, so when you deliver those decorations, you'll go ahead and you'll deliver both the area control scoring, which will help you. You have a roof marker, the middle markers, and the door markers, which will go on the top, middle, and bottom respectively. And then you have these over here. If you deliver with different gems, if you deliver with one gem of either color, you'll go up one marker on there. And if you deliver with two, you'll go up three markers, which can be a giant chunk of points, especially if you do it early game. The last action you can take in the game, and this is all listed on your player board, by the way, but the last action you can take in the game is you can go ahead and take a resource action, which is gonna be one of the more common actions you actually take. When you take a resource action, you gather one of these dice over here. And again, these are A, B, and C, these respective actions. When you take a resource action, you choose any one die and you move it forward that many spaces. So for example, I can take this white die over here and because it's a two, I can move it forward one, two sections, sections being defined as these groupings over here. So I can move this over here in order to go ahead and take this bonus twice. Twice, not because it's a two, but because there's two dice. Each spot has a maximum of three dice and if they're ever full, you cannot put another die there, but you will be able to take the benefits shown on these markers equal to the number of times the die is in that region. So for example, over here, I can take two of those green gems because there's two dice. Additionally, whenever you go ahead and you're going to store these in your little workshop area here, a workshop area that will get more and more full as you place your claim markers on this board. Additionally, that whenever you move a die, there's three things you do. The first is you, and you can do them in any order you want. You can take the resources shown on that location equal to the number of dice there are. You will also go ahead and be able to activate any of these markers you have if you put them down over here. So for example, had I put this down over here, then because I just moved a white die, I would go ahead and take the white die 
bonus, taking an extra goal, adding that to my workshop. And then lastly, you can take the one of the actions defined by one of the people in the quadrant you're in. So in this quadrant over here, I can take one of these two actions, either exchanging two of any resource for a resource of my choice, or four of any resource for two resources of my choice. In this case, I'll go ahead and exchange that gold and one of those gems for that other purple gem, hoping to be able to decorate one of those uh, buildings over there. And that's the core action you take as you move resources around. The last thing you'll do is you'll re-roll both dice, add them to the spot, which means the next player can go ahead and move their own dice around the board, maybe moving that green gem taking this action twice as you go round and around and that's the primary engine of the game three core actions an action that allows you to take resources with a bunch of things that happen at the same time an action that allows you to reserve a cathedral spot and an action that allows you to deliver goods to that cathedral in order to score points the last thing to note is the way you're going to score points at the end of the game because at the end of the game you're going to score points for control of the cathedrals in each column every completed region every completed spot is going to be worth two and then additionally every ornament or decoration will be worth an additional one and what you'll do with those you'll count up the totals for example if this was fully completed and and it had this at the top, that would be worth nine points. Two, 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 plus one, and that would be worth a total of nine points. And whoever has the most control in the region, defined as these markers, plus their actual decorations as well, those count for control as well. Whoever has the most control will get the majority of those points, will get all nine points. Whoever has the second most control will get half that rounded down. Third most will get half that rounded down, so forth and so on, until you go through all the people who have presence at that cathedral. And there's a tie tiebreaker aspect of adding up the points for a tied position and then dividing it equally rounded down and that is the red cathedral that's the game there's gonna be a few other things we didn't really fully, fully talk about for example there's a solo mode we didn't get into a few small rules we didn't talk about all the specific details there's an advanced side to this workshop as well giving you a few more options you can dive into that there's gonna be a variety in these cards there's gonna be three of each of these cards around the board so you can mix and match different special options you have and these are a big deal utilizing these options are key to being able to deliver your engine and so these are all a major deal as you go through it and that's basically the red cathedral plays in around you know an hour plus to get the game and now before we go into the review let's talk about contractors contractors are going to add a few things first of all it adds a ton of cards you have a giant stack of just tons and tons and tons of cards giving you tons more options as far as the different ways you will have this game different ways you'll be able to play the game this is a giant stack of new cards you can add to the board uh, replacing the, the the clergyman over here then additionally you'll have this sideboard which is a big part of the game this sideboard which will move in and then from there we can also add in the extra layer workshop board which we'll need once we move this in so if we put this down over here we move these out of the way and we slide this up on top of your previously existing board we now have a new workshop new basic things same basic rules are in play just adding those instead and then we have some other things so for instance we have a black die that gets added to the board we'll have these markers which will go on top of these towers. So if we go ahead and move these over here, these correlate to that market board down there. So if we put these down, these will randomly go on top of each tower in the game. And then let's go ahead and go through. And then you have a few other elements. So this might be sw swapped in for this. We'll have a bunch of these tokens, which we'll put over here for right now, just so you can see them. And then let's talk about how this works. So this adds a few things. The first thing, like I said already, is it's adding cards to the game. So you have a whole bunch of new cards, a whole bunch of new variety in that sake. Uh, that will be added to the game over there. But past that, it adds a whole new board where you can send your people. The way that works over there is we now have a new resource, and I probably should have grabbed this as well, replacing this putting that in play and you're going to add these to the board which give you new things over here these little diploma map thingies that will allow you to send people to this region the way that works is as an action there's now a fourth action you can take the fourth action is you can take one of your people and you can add them to one of the regions that is not marked out what you're going to look at the number of towers you have in the game each tower is going to get a location and any towers that do not have a location will instead get an x marker on that region you'll additionally have these bonuses around here which we'll talk about how you get those in a second because you can go ahead and put down a person spending a map in order to put a person down on a region and then take one of the adjacent side bonuses and pay two money to put it on the black die spot. So for example, I can go ahead and grab this and put this down over here and pay the two money to do so. Now, a few things are worth mentioning here. The first is it doesn't cost one map to go there. It costs one map for every person there, including the one that just went. So placing a second person there will cost me two maps. A third person will cost me three maps. And if another person wants to go there right now, it'll cost them four maps. You're counting yours and others. And then you're going to go ahead and take one of those spots, paying the money, putting it in the black die spot, and then taking from the bag another one, replacing that on the board. And that's the way that works. Whenever you activate the black die, moving it one, two, three, four, 
you can go ahead and do activate this specific bonus. In this case, I can pay wood to get three. I can give up a wood in order to get three points. And then you'll go ahead and put this off to the side in your own little side region where you potentially will get end game scoring up to 16 prestige over there for having all the six different types. You're basically going through a set collection of different types of symbols of the different color little icons you have over here. Uh, past that, you're going to go ahead and Past that, you're going to, whenever you complete a tower, whenever you fully complete a tower, you're going to add up the amount of markers you have in that tower, and you're going to multiply that by the number of people in that specific region. So in this case, you're going to, let's put these people in Novgorod. If we complete the Novgorod tower, we go ahead and put this down on Novgorod. No one else can go there anymore, but I'd multiply my one marker by my three people and get three points there, which may not sound like a lot, and it isn't, but if you have three markers and four people, that can be a giant chunk of points. I've seen this get as high as 16 points in a game that goes to somewhere in the range of 100 to 150 points. I've seen people get 16 points in a single tower scoring, which can absolutely be the difference between winning and losing in this game. And that's primarily what the expansion adds. Again, a few things we didn't talk about. We didn't. One of the things we didn't talk about even from the base game is the fact that you can always pay to move your color die. In my case, I'm yellow, so I can pay to move yellow, white, and black in the game. The base game is only going to have white and yellow because there is no black die. But that is basically how you play the contractor's expansion or most of the facets. Lots of other small little things along with that. A variety of the cards in here come with their own special rules or decks of cards or tokens or gems, whole bunch of things that get added to the game, which now is finally time to talk about the review. Starting off with the ease of play. A game is very easy to get into. I would say it's very clearly broken down. It almost feels like a Queen Games rulebook in the presentation, and I think Queen Games rulebooks generally are pretty good. Uh, but it basically basically breaks down the core structure into the three actions you can take, clearly delineating the three the three actions, how those play out, and I think it's fairly easy to understand how to play the game. A little bit of like you know just things you have to kind of get, but then once you go through setup, once you go through the actions, it starts to paint a very clear picture of how it works. And then adding in the contract expansion is very easy because it's just a few small extra stuff. Uh, it's very easy to understand everything. Going going on there. Overall, an easy game to understand, to teach, and then playtime is generally, I would say, always under 90 minutes. Uh, once you have people who know the game and it's up and running, I would say closer to an hour, maybe an hour plus. Also, table space is fairly minimal. As far as player count, this is a one to four player game. I've so far, I've not played the solo mode. I have played this at two and three players. I think three is a better game in terms of the area control aspects of the game. Three gives you a better experience in terms of uh, the fighting, the vying for area control, both on the cathedral itself, as well as in this side region over here. But I think two gives you a better experience in terms of this board here and being able to play off each other's moves in terms of setting each other up for potentially good moves because it's a very direct one-to-one -one relationship. If I take a move for myself, it might set you up for a good move. If I pass on a move, you might get that move. So I would say I like it both at two and three players almost equally. I think two players gives you a slightly faster experience and a better resource engine, and three players gives you a slightly slower experience, a little more random in the resource, but more control or more fun in the area control nature of the game. They both have their strengths. I really like it at both player counts and have not played it at four. As far as what I like, don't like, and conceal is not liking. First of all, there's a large degree of variety in the game. A large degree of variety that comes from this giant stack of cards, and this is obviously improved upon by the expansion. I only played the base game once before starting to dive into the expansion, so I can't comment on how long the base game lasts on its own, although in theory there's 12 different cards, the ways they mix and match is definitely present, but having a giant stack of cards gives you tons of variety in the different ways that this game plays out, and those actions matter a lot. These actions, all, all the time you're trying to think through that trifecta. If I move a die, I'm going to be getting something from moving the die, I'm going to be getting something from the fact that my die is attached to a certain color bonus, hopefully as you build them up, and also I'm going to be getting the specific bonus region, bonus action in that region. And that trifecta of three things, the order you're going to take them, and how you manage your, your market board, your resources, because resources are always tight, that is always the challenge and the puzzle in the Red Cathedral, and having a ton of variety gives you more of a challenge, more of a puzzle, and some of those things come with their own little mini rules as far as how that acts. Sometimes it's about symbols and just reading the symbols and understanding that. Other times it's about adding a full new game mechanic to the game that you have to integrate once you you add that card type to the game. So there's a lot of variety here. And it's not always about getting the most resources, which I really appreciate. There are many times where you have an action set up. Very often, you'll have a situation like this where I'm looking at the board and I'm sitting here saying, I could move this here, which will get me two stone times three dice, which will give me six stone. But I don't need six stone because I only have room for three resources left. But if I don't take that action, then they'll take the action and they'll get six stone. So do I go for the denial? Well, can I use this action? This action will allow me to make extra deliveries to my market, to my, to my cards over here. So maybe it's worth going there for the, the combination of denial and getting extra things, even though I'll only be able to benefit from two stone. That kind of decision point, that kind of thinking of 
trying to think through the fact that you don't just need resources, but you may not really, you may not need the resources at all, but your opponent might be able to get them, especially in a two player game. That's one of the reasons I like the two player game a lot, because it's very much if I deny you, I'm helping myself almost inherently. It adds a lot of tension to the experience in a way that is not just about getting the most resources or the clearly obvious move, but it has a lot of push and pull in the tension of what you're trying to do. And there's lots of ways to score and pursue your engine. Obviously, there's the area control puzzle you're engaging in, which is a big deal. You'll get a lot of points in the game for that. But you also get a ton of points in game. I would argue you get more points in game as you build up various sections, as you gather various points, as you find different scoring cards. There will be different scoring cards you play with that will give you more or fewer points. As you decorate the cathedrals with these various options, there are a ton of ways to get points in game, and taking advantage of those as early and often is a big deal, especially since many of them reward you with those little gaps, which are stronger the earlier in the game you go. Sure, you can try to do other things to build your engine but if you push off these decorations too long you'll be doing it when it's three times two instead of when it's three times four or three times five and so it's very often a trade-off in this game what you do how you do it the decisions around what you do matter a lot when you do it and what you do is a big deal in this game and every move has three things to it which is very rewarding that puzzle trying to figure out okay great there's different things i want when i move the die which of those things is most important to me the type of resource i'm getting the quantity of resource i'm getting the extra action i'm taking how i'm manipulating my side die there's a lot of fun things there and all of this all these positives i'm talking about they all come in a very accessible playtime as well and under 90 minutes per game, which is very rewarding. And then the expansion adds more too, which we talked about with expansion adds and all that, but I love this sideboard. This sideboard gives another element to be mindful of, another element to consider, both giving you more benefits, but also point scoring. Getting an extra chunk of 16 points at the end of the game is a big deal. Going for those can absolutely be the difference between winning and losing in this game. It is very, very satisfying to go for those and to manage those things. And again, that puzzle is always present as well. I may not care about having a person in Suzdal, but if you do, getting my first person in Suzdal is going to lead to to you paying an extra one for every additional one. That trade-off around what you want and denying others is present in the expansion as well, and it all works well, very well together. As far as what I don't like, the biggest thing is going to come down to something which I'm hoping I'm right about. And I've, I've read through this 10 times, and I, I don't see a way in which I'm wrong about it, but I honest, honestly, I've just been breaking it anyway. So what I mean by that is when you go through the expansion, unless I'm reading this incorrectly and I really think I'm reading it correctly, it's one of those times where I'm like, am I misunderstanding this? I must be misunderstanding this. As far as I can see it, you can only use one of these cards, one of these t giant stacks of cards you have from the expansion. As far as I can see, you only use one of them per game. The way the game is set up is it says you use the core cards to use one of those every single game. And yes, you do have a variety of them. You have three of each different type. But then from these, all these giant stacks of cards, you add one of them to replace the clergy. And that's it which means a giant stack of card variety is not fully present in the game. Now, I understand if that is the actual rule, and I've read it three times, I think I'm getting this correctly, but, uh, well, 10 times, three times, I've read it a lot, trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. But as far as that goes, I understand why that would exist, because the other cards all bring a certain type of balance, and adding too many of these can mess up the game balance. That said, I've played by just putting in cards that I want in the game and not worrying about which set they come from at all. I've done that, and it does work fine. Sometimes it does give you different screwy engines of resources. There have been games i played where you have an abundance of resources and no ways to trade them in, which doesn't result in a bad game. It results in a different puzzle you are all trying to solve. So while I understand the rule, assuming I'm getting the rule correctly, I don't like the rule. It limits the variety. It limits the ways I'm going to see. Like, I'm not going to play this game 40 times. I'm not. I mean, maybe at some point in my life, but it's going to take a long time before I play this game enough to actually benefit from these cards. And so I've just been mixing them in randomly and enjoying the experience and puzzle it provides. Although I would encourage you to follow their rules, at least initially, because it can result in slightly messed up combinations. And then secondly, kind of attached to the same concept, which is the main variety of this game does come down to those cards. Cards. And while they are impactful, I don't know if they're as impactful as I'd like. I'd almost rather more things to be changing up every single game. Like, for instance, they have this cathedral over here. They have different patterns to the way you build out the cathedral. It doesn't really change the way I play or interact with the experience. I like the experience, make no mistake, but I think to me the biggest reason to keep diving into it is the cards, which is one of the reasons that I keep on mixing up the, all four cards and not just one of them at a time. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, fairly dry game. It's a fairly dry game. It's a, it's a pure Euro engine of taking actions, trying to get resources, trying to optimize around that, rinse and repeat for 60 minutes to 90 minutes until you eventually, hopefully, win the game. And secondly, and kind of related to that, is the thematic 
thematic aspect of building a cathedral, totally not there for me. Now, that doesn't bother me at all. I'm not in this for the thematic aspect. I'm in it for the mechanical aspect. But if you're looking for a thematic tie-in here, I can't say that in any way, shape, or form I get the sense or feeling that I'm building a cathedral. I am moving dice around, collecting resources, and trying to turn those resources into points as efficiently as possible. That's the way I feel when I'm playing this game and nothing more. And then lastly, I would say the dice have, and this is a small nitpick to be very clear, but the dice has a slightly confusing element to it, and let me show you how that works. One of the things you can do over here is you can take a bonus on this board and you can take one of these dice bonuses, putting it down over there, paying two money. At that point, when you move the green die, so if I move the green die over here, I then activate what the red die is doing, which means the red die gives me two stone. This is something I find that maybe that's clear right now, I don't know, but it's again, whenever you activate that die, you take the benefit that's currently by that die. And for me, I find that every time I play this game, so every time I teach someone new this game, someone struggles with that inherently. It's not a big deal. Usually course corrects within a few moves, but somebody's always struggling with that aspect of, okay, so I get the benefit of this and I get the benefit of that. And when I place this, sometimes even people, people even think of cascades, like, okay, great. Well, if I have this die over here, so if I'm activating the green die, I take what's, let's go ahead and put this here. So I've had people do this as well, where I'm activating the green die. Great. So I'll take the benefit of the red die, the two stone, but I'll also take the benefit of where the red die is because of that. I'll take one money as well. I've had people mess around with how that engine actually works in ways that it does not. I find it is a drop confusing, very clear. This is a nitpick, but uh, definitely something that's come up with almost everyone I've taught the game to. With that, we go to final thoughts, starting off with the fact that, I don't know why I said starting off. With that, we go to final thoughts on Red Cathedral and the expansion contractors. I really like this game a lot more than I thought I would. It, and I think primarily because of the amount of game it gives me in a very small playtime. A very small rel is a relative number, but the amount of choice and decision, decision space I get out of this game for a sub 90 minute playtime in a game that plays well at two, well at three. I haven't tried it at four yet, but I think it would play well. I don't think it'd be my favorite player count, just based on even the difference between two and three. I think three and two are likely where I'm going to settle on this one, but it's a game I probably would play at four as well. And this one gives you a lot of decision space packed into a very condensed playtime and in a very accessible game, fairly easy to teach game. And the expansion to me is an easy addition, by the way. I would never play this game without the expansion. I would not teach the game without the expansion. I think the expansion molds nicely into the game, does not overly bog down what the experience is, and yet adds you an extra level of decision space. Now, I like my first game without the expansion as well, to be very clear, but I definitely like it more with the expansion. Again, I would not play it without it at this point. Honestly, I'm just annoyed that it doesn't fit into the same box. I'm fairly annoyed by that like it really it really does not fit into the same box at all which is a little bit irritating but past that i like the game i think it does a good job of giving you a lot of decision space smacked into a small packed into two small boxes packed into a short playtime in an accessible manner uh, for me this one's a four out of five i enjoy it i like it i am a little curious how long it lasts for me it's one of those games that falls into that weird space where i know i like it i know i enjoy it i've actively been playing it since i got it but also it's the kind of thing that might go on the shelf at some point and then become a game that comes out less frequently I think for me, a big part of that will be how much, how long these continue to be satisfying. For right now, I haven't played with all the new factions yet. There's like 10 new factions. I have not tried them all yet, but they all give you a different way of experiencing the game and interacting with the game. And I like mixing and matching them in different ways. And as long as that continues to be a, a different incentive to feel like I'm playing the same game with a different puzzle, then the Red Cathedral will likely continue to hit the table. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Furnace. This game very much makes me think of Furnace in terms of uh, the amount of decision space and tough things going on in a very small box, in a very small playtime. Uh, overall, just feeling-wise, this really reminds me of Furnace. Very different mechanics, to be very clear, totally different games. But it just gave me that same mid-weight Euro, short playtime, and yet a lot of decision space that plays really well with three players. And then an additional uh, option is going to be Merlin. This game, to a certain extent, with the dice and the way you're moving the dice and trying to navigate the dice, trying to take larger and cascading bonuses and a rondel mechanism, to, a, to, a, to an extent, this game reminded me of Merlin. It feels differently, but on the surface level, it has a bunch of overlaps and all the different ways of scoring. Uh, Merlin from Stefanfeld and Queen Games. Speaking of Queen Games, second time they got to mention this video. But yeah, Furnace and Merlin will be my two recommendations here. In any case, and until next time, I hope you found this video helpful. And as always, I hope you have a good one.